ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اقرارا بربوبيته وارغاما لمن جحد وكفر كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والاكرام يا ايها الناس فاني اوصيكم ونفسي المخطئه بتقوى الله واحثكم على طاعته وبالع صيانه ومخالفه امره فمن يعمل مثقال ذره خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذره شرا يره يقول ربكم سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى in the glorious book he mentions are you who believe في الله the fear that he deserves and do not die except in the state of islam which is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King of all kings, the master, the creator, the sustainer. And we send our salutations among our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation to ever step foot on this earth, our role model. Today, in the morning, we received news that a little girl had passed away, five years old. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for her family. The death of this little five-year-old girl, another soul taken. And every single day another person will go, whether you know him or not. Every single day passes, every single hour passes, and every single second passes, and the angel of death is doing his job, taking the souls. Allah, uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions in the hadith, when he was sitting around the companions, and he says to them, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَادِمِ الْلَذَّاتِ He says to them, increase in the remembrance of the destroyer of desires. So the companions, they, were, they, they started to ask. And then they asked the Prophet Muhammad O oh, Prophet of Allah, what do you mean by the destroyer of desires? And then Rasulullah wasallam he replies back and he says, the destroyer of the, of the desire is al-mawt, death. My brothers, why is the destroyer of desire death? Why is the death that you will face the destroyer of desire? Put this scenario in your head, my brothers. It is time for you to go. You're leaving this world. You're sitting on your deathbed. Would you be thinking of the women? Would you be thinking of the cars? Would you be thinking of the houses? Would you be thinking of that paper? Would you be thinking of that dollar? What would you be thinking of? You would be thinking of myself, my deeds. What have I done? So increase in the remembrance of the destroyer of desires. For verily death is the destroyer of desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ That every single soul will taste death. Every single person, every single soul that is ever created will taste death. And if there's anyone that will ever not taste death, or has the right not to taste death, it would have been the Prophet, the best of creation, and he himself, he tasted death. The Prophet himself tasted death, and now he lies in his grave. Every single soul will taste death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, and he says it to the Prophet, that verily you are dead. 
and every single other person is dead. No one will stay alive. Everyone will die. Every single person's soul will be taken. And they will be resurrected. On the day of judgment, the angel of death, after taking every single soul from the humans and the jinn and the malaika, the angels, after every animal had died, when there is nothing left, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asks the angel of death and He knows the answer. He asks him, Who's, Who remains? So the angel of death will, will reply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, it is angel Jibreel that remains. Angel Mikael, Israfil, the eight angels who are carrying your throne and myself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands the angel of death to take the, the soul of Jibreel, Mikael, wa Israfil. So the angel of death goes and does that. Takes the soul of Jibra, Jibreel, the arch angel, the biggest angel, tasted death. He takes the soul of Mikael, wa Israfil. And then he comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asks, O oh, angel of death, who remains? So the angel of death, he will reply, Oh Allah, it is the eight angels who are carrying your throne and myself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands the angel of death to go and take the soul of those eight angels who are carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the angel of death goes and does it. For those eight angels, they taste death. And then he comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah asks, who remains? So the angel of death, he will answer and he will say, Ya Allah, it's just you and I. So after taking every single soul from the humans, every single soul from the jinn, and every single soul from the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands the angel of death to die and he dies. After taking every soul, even the angel of death tasted death. And now there is no one on the face of the planet. There is not one living soul. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes a remarkable statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He calls out, Ayn al-jabbaroon? Ayn al-mutakabbiroon? Where are those with pride? Where are those tyrants? And no one will answer. So the second time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out, Ayn al-jabbaroon? Ayn al-mutakabbiroon? Where are those tyrants? Where are they? Where are those kings? Where are those leaders who used to oppress people? Where are they? And then he says, Ayn al-mutakabbiroon? Where are those with pride who used to see themselves as something big? Verily you are nothing. Where are those with pride? No one will answer. Third time over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will ask. And he will call out, Ayn al-jabbaroon, Ayn al-mutakabbiroon. And the third time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer. He says, Lillahi al-wahid, liman al-mulku al-yawm, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, again, where are those tyrants? Where are they? Where are those with pride? And then he asks, who, to whom is the kingdom today? To whom is the kingdom today? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asks, He answers, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, the only, the irresistible. Everyone will taste death. Everyone. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is hay, never dies. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will never ever die. Everyone shall taste death. In our busy lives, in our lifestyle, constantly running around, we think we can run away from death. We think we can escape it. We think we can hide from that reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Listen to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Say that that death that you're trying to run away from, 
That death that you're trying to hide from. That death that you think it's never ever going to come to you. That death that you've been running away from for your whole life. It's going to find you. It's going to find you. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Thumma turaddun. And then you will be resurrected. There's going to be an akhirah. A resurrection. You will be asked. What did you do? Why did you do it? You'll be asked of everything that you've done. And then you'll be presented with your good and bad deeds in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone will taste death. Every single soul will taste death. Subhanallah, today we think we're going to live forever. The way we think that we're going to live forever, brother, that come, I tell someone, brother, you think you're going to live, you think, I'm, I know I'm going to die. You're a liar. Look at yourself. Look at your lifestyle. How do you live? Is it a life of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it a life where you want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it a life that you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Which life do you live? If it's a life that's disobedient, if it's a life that, that's negligent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you don't know that death is going to come and approach you. Because if you knew the reality of death, then wallahi, wallahi you'll be the best Muslim that you can. If you knew the reality of death, you will live Islam. For verily, death is going to come and meet every single one of us. Every soul will taste death. At the time of death, when the angel comes down to take your soul, and it's your last moments, the doors of repentance close. The doors of repentance close. So don't think you can run away from Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't think that you can do whatever you want in this life. And when it comes time to death, I'll say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And I'll enter the paradise. This, isn't that what the Prophet Sallallahu said? You're not even going to be able to say it. You're not even going to be able to utter those words if you live the life of disobedience. Look at the story of Fir'aun. When the, two seas, when the sea parted into two mountains and Musa walked in with Bani Israel and they crossed this, this massive sea, Fir'aun, he, he followed them with his army. And then Musa made it to the other side safely. Fir'aun, still walking in the sea with his army, sees the two mountains of water coming down ready to crush him. Fir'aun, the biggest tyrant, who used to kill babies one year, and he used to let, let them live the other year. The biggest tyrant. He now realizes, I'm going to die. It's time for me to go. He's, he realized that there's a Rabb. He realized that there's a God. This is time for him to go. He's ready to say the Shahada. He's ready to, to utter the words of the, of the La ilaha illallah. So what does Jibreel do? He grabs sand and shoves it in his mouth. You're not saying nothing. You live the life of disobedience. You will not be able to utter those words on that day. On that day when you will taste death. If you live a, a life of disobedience, my brothers, the, the doors of repentance will close in front of you and you won't be able to do nothing about it. Every single soul will taste death. Every single soul will taste death and you'll be one of two. One of two souls, either the good soul or the wicked soul. For the good soul, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes how the angel of death will descend upon this person and take his soul. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions that the good soul will be taken. Yani, he says, you've got a bottle of water and if you were to tip it over and there's one drop in it and it's just hanging and then it fa finally falls down. He uses that parable. He uses that example for the soul of the good believer to leave his body. So smooth, so easy, even though there is pain, even though there is agony, a little bit, but it comes out smooth, comes out nicely. This soul will come out of the body peacefully. And then what happens for this good soul who is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who used to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this soul will leave the body. And it will have such a beautiful fragrance coming out of it. 
that the angels will come and they want to see this beautiful fragrance and they'll come and they'll pile up. And they'll see this beautiful soul and they'll come and pile up even more. And more angels will come and there's more of a commotion. More angels will come and they'll start calling out, what a beautiful smell. They'll start calling out, what a beautiful soul. They will name this soul of beautiful names. This soul, such a beautiful smell will come out of it. Beautiful names, surrounded by angels, starts to elevate. It will start to elevate. And it will reach the first heaven. And then from the first heaven, more angels will come. More angels will pile up. More angels will go around this soul. And then it will reach the second heaven. And then the third heaven. And then the fourth heaven. Until it reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He commands this soul. He commands this soul to come back to its rightful position. Back to the grave. After it has reached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says that I'm pleased with this soul, He commands it to come back down into the grave. So this soul will start to descend with beautiful names, with beautiful fragrance, and it will come back down into the grave. It will, it will lie down in the grave. And then the two angels will come, Munkar wa Nakir. Those two angels will come and they will ask this soul three questions. Very, very easy for us to answer now. But wallahi brothers, it's not the tongue that will speak that day. It's the heart that will speak. Those two angels will ask the three questions. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was the man that was sent to you? Who is our Lord? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is our religion? It is Islam. And who was the man that was sent to us? It is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On that day, my brothers, it is not the tongue that will speak, it is the heart that will speak. And when this beautiful, obedient, pious soul will answer those three questions successfully, his, his grave will be made so wide as far as he can see, so easy for him to sleep in, so easy, not, it's going to be so comfortable, very, very wide. And a window will be opened for him. And he can start to smell the fragrance of Jannah. And he can see his position in Jannah. And then he starts to make dua, Ya Allah, make that day come, I want to enter the Jannah. For that beautiful, pious, disbelieving uh, soul. As for the second type, the wicked soul. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes how this soul will be taken out of the body. He gives us the example and the parable of how a thorn if it's stuck in wool, and really imagine this, picture this in your mind. You've got wool from a sheep, whatever it is, wool that's all fluffy and it's just got fibers everywhere. And you've got a piece of thorn, a sticky thorn inside, inside that wool. And you want to take out that wool, that, 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 uh, that thorn. You want to take out that thorn. Does it come out nicely? Does it come out peacefully? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gives us this parable. And imagine this for yourself, brothers. Not for the person sitting next to you. Imagine this is happening to your soul. Your soul is going to be ripped out of that wool. Ripped out from that th That thorn is going to be ripped out. Not only that thorn comes out, but pieces of the wool come out from that wool. So it's going to be ripped out of your body. Shattered out of your body. Slammed out of your body. It's going to be smashed. Such pain. Such agony. That disbelieving soul ripped out of his body. And then when he comes out, such an awful smell will come out. Such a disgusting, putrid smell will come out of it. The angels will call out, what's that ugly smell? Who's that ugly soul? They will call it filthy names. They will call it ugly names. They will say, what's that filthy smell? What's that ugly smell? They will start to complain. What is that? No one wants to go near it. Everyone runs away from that soul. And then that soul starts to elevate. And it will reach the first heaven. And the angels of the first heaven don't even allow it to go past. They say, go back down. You don't even have, you don't have the, you have no honor. You've got no pride. Go back down. This is where you belong, back down there. So this soul will come back down. And it will go into its rightful position, into the grave. After it goes into the grave, the two angels, Munkar wa Nakir, will come down to this soul. And they will ask the three questions. And wallahi my brothers, wallahi my brothers, it is your heart that will answer these questions, not your tongue. It is your heart. Who is your Lord? 
What is your religion and who is the man that was sent to you? This disbelieving soul, this wicked soul, this soul that wasn't obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this soul was disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, won't be able to answer those questions. So then what happens? The angels smack that soul with a metal hammer, 70 meters down into the ground. His grave will be made so tight on him, so, so tight he can't even move. And then a window will be open for him. That's your position in hellfire. No, that's yours for the disbelieving soul. Wallahi, my brothers, every single one of us, every single one of us will taste death. And every single one of us will go through that process. And every single one of us will be, will be asked the questions. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was the man that was sent to you? And every single one of us will be only able to answer through our hearts. Not what's in our tongues. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those obedient, pious souls. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'iri al-muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Taqaddam, taqaddam.